Hi everybody and welcome to this session on technology enhanced learning and innovation in clinical education. Technology enhanced learning or TEL is the application of technology to enhance student learning experience through the use of flexible and interactive pedagogies to deliver and assess learning. We hope to inspire you to try out and use technology in your teaching so that you are ready to innovate and engage and enthuse your own learners in the rapidly evolving field of clinical education. Here is the session outline. We'll start by looking at current practice. We will then explore research on the effectiveness of online learning, the essentials for developing online learning, including barriers and challenges you might face, and we will end by looking at what's new on the horizon. Current practice in most institutions, whether undergraduate or postgraduate, involves three basic types of education delivery. Traditional methods using face-to-face -face delivery in classrooms, which you will all be familiar with. Online or distance learning using a variety of technologies. Some of you might be familiar with this. And blended learning, a combination of face-to-face -face and online learning bringing the best of both modalities into the learning experience. The COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in a closure of all face-to-face -face teaching in schools, colleges and universities. Institutions and educationalists are rising to the challenge to deliver emergency remote teaching at a staggering pace. This has been a very steep learning curve for many. And doing this while trying to keep safe from a public health emergency has been very challenging and unsettling. However, disruption often leads to innovation and this opportunity to innovate could result in the development of smarter and more flexible learning that truly addresses the learning needs of our students in an interactive and engaging learning environment. Online teaching and learning has been studied for decades. Research tells us that careful instructional design, planning and development is required to deliver effective online learning. But is online learning effective within clinical education? Let's look at some systematic reviews published on this subject. McCutcheon et al's Mixed Method Systematic Review evaluated the impact of online or blended learning versus face-to-face -face learning of clinical skills in undergraduate nurse education. Based on the available evidence, they concluded that online learning of clinical skills is no less effective than traditional means. The evidence on blended learning was insufficient to draw any conclusions. There was a wide variety of interventions used in the studies reviewed ranging from the use of interactive video discs and CD-ROMs in the much older studies to the use of screen-based computer simulation and e-learning packages using multimedia books, making direct comparisons difficult. Student satisfaction with online learning was mixed, with some studies reporting it positively and others negatively. The age of the students their digital literacy skills, learning style and attitude towards technology are some of the factors identified in literature as affecting student engagement and satisfaction with online learning. Richmond et al. carried out a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials of online versus alternative methods that is lectures, manuals and workshops for training licensed healthcare professionals to deliver clinical interventions. They concluded that online methods are likely to be as effective as alternative methods for training healthcare professionals in clinical interventions for the outcomes of knowledge and clinical behavior. There were too few studies to draw any conclusions on online learning for practical skills, self-efficacy and satisfaction. Limitations of available research studies reported were the small sample sizes, poor methodological quality, 
missing outcomes and insufficient details of online interventions. In addition, studies rarely reported the pedagogical rationale for their choice of technology. A meta-analysis of randomized control trials of online versus offline learning among undergraduate medical students published in 2019 reported that the post-test scores of the online learning group were significantly higher than the post-test scores of the offline learning group. Only one study included in this review compared retention test scores between the two groups and reported a statistically significant difference between them. In summary, it appears that online learning is certainly no worse than offline learning in health professions education and it might even be more effective. So, is there a place for qualitative research here? Often, it is the whole student experience that determines whether students engage with and benefit from any educational intervention. Measures such as student satisfaction, accessibility, interaction, engagement are all very important to understand and these measures are best addressed by qualitative research. So, any comprehensive evaluation of educational interventions might best be carried out by a combination of quantitative and qualitative research methods. Let's now look at the essentials for developing online learning. TEL can support and improve the learning experience through flexible delivery and assessment of education. Flexible learning could be about the pace, the place and or the mode of learning. Flexibility of pace, part-time or full-time learning, accelerated or decelerated learning within complete programs such as the four-year graduate entry MBBS program compared to the standard five-year program or within a program where students could work at their own pace within broad overall deadlines. Flexibility of place allows the learner to be physically located at work or home, accessing learning while commuting or within different time zones when traveling. Flexible modes of learning comprise of the vast number of learning technologies now available and the use of blended learning and or distance learning. Masters et al. put forward an adapted hierarchy of needs for using mobile technology in medical education based on Maslow's original hierarchy of needs. According to this model, for learners to reach the highest level of self-actualization and to be able to use mobile technologies for personal and professional development, all the needs at the lower levels of the pyramid, such as connectivity, networks, a safe learning environment, and patient safety, have to be achieved first. Similarly, in designing and assessing online learning activities, consideration has to be given to Bloom's taxonomy as applied to digital learning. Here, activities at the lowest level of remembering could include bookmarking, social networking, or even Googling, and at the highest level, creating, include digital skills such as podcasting, filming, screencasting, programming, animating, etc. From a more practical point of view, there are a few issues that need consideration before creating online learning. To create a new course, good market research is needed to explore target markets and their key characteristics, identification of their learning needs, gaps in provision, the unique selling point of your planned content and delivery. Unlike face-to-face -face learning, most of the resources are required upfront to build the course with the help of learning technologists, learning designers, etc. Technical and logistic problems are of a higher magnitude because of issues such as connectivity, licenses, software used, and student support for IT and academic needs. In terms of flexibility of learning, one has to consider the desired interaction with and between students and tutors. 
Would this be synchronous or asynchronous, or a combination of the two? This is particularly relevant if the course is delivered across several time zones. Other factors include convenience. Could some parts be automated? Example, the content release. Could learning be personalized, as well as offered in multiple formats to increase accessibility? Is there a need to include tracking of student activity? This information could be helpful in reviewing student engagement and learning, checking learner activity across course sections, student responses and contributions to discussions. Note that the ethics of collecting and using this information also needs to be considered. Above all, we need to put pedagogy before technology. Design the course using best practice in pedagogical methods and then identify suitable technologies for the purpose. There might be several barriers and challenges to the use of TEL in clinical education. One of the most important challenges in developing online material is the cost. As the course or lesson has to be built before it commences, the resources like time, money, academics, learning technologies, training, etc. are required upfront. This can be particularly tricky without the backing of good market research. However, if built using the right pedagogical models and technology, courses can be sustainable in the long term. Obviously, all courses need review and updating from time to time, and e-learning is no different. Quality assurance of online courses follows the same principles as traditional methods. However, as learners need to be able to operate confidently within the learning environment created, care has to be taken to signpost students to course materials, online reading lists and library resources, student support for academic, IT, admin and pastoral care, and there is a need to be responsive to student queries, especially when operating at a distance. Online learners are likely to have varying levels of digital media literacy. This is the ability to effectively find, identify, evaluate and use digital information. IT and academic support should be in place to deal with this. Political commitment and leadership is essential to make the transition from face-to-face -face learning to truly online learning. Finally, the systematic reviews of literature that we explored earlier reported the poor quality of available research studies and insufficient details of online interventions and the pedagogical rationale for these. Further higher quality research is required to address this. So, what's on the horizon for TEL in clinical education? We are already beginning to see more real-time audience participation and group work during remote teaching. Use of virtual patients for clinical reasoning and clinical experience. Gamification of learning to increase student participation, engagement and enjoyment Example, use of the escape room format for educational activities. Simulation, where the low or high fidelity now forms part of many courses, and you might already have encountered this. Virtual reality, to provide a fully immersive experience to students. Use of artificial intelligence, for example, machine learning for precision medicine, predicting treatment protocols for patients based on patient attributes and treatment contexts, and robotics for process automation. I hope this session has given you an understanding of research on the effectiveness of online learning, the key considerations for developing TEL, including barriers and challenges that might be faced. We also touched briefly on what's new on the TEL horizon. If you have any queries or wish to discuss TEL further, please get in touch with me. Thank you.